what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Reverend Al Sharpton delivered the eulogy at George Floyd's funeral on Tuesday in Houston, and he did not miss words. He went in on those who deny justice and the ones who turned a blind eye to discrimination, inequality, et cetera, et cetera, in the cash must sweater. Now, the Rev said that George Floyd's death was not only a tragedy, it was a crime. And he called for police reform. He called for people to stand up, to not just be an observer of injustice. Now, I know some of you are saying, Reverend Al Sharpton, yuck, 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 uh, uh, uh. I get it, I get it. I know everybody got their complaints. But I'm just telling you what I heard. I was there. And I witnessed how the, how the audience responded. Now, when he was introduced, he got an applause. He got applause, but it wasn't really resounding. You know, it wasn't really that, ah, Al Sharpton. You know, it's like, you never can tell what kind of response Al Sharpton is going to get when he's introduced to an audience. Because, you know, some people, you know, people got their people got their ways when it comes to Al Sharpton. Now, I will say this. Yes, Al Sharpton has had some uh, incidents where his character came into question. I often think about the time when he turned government witness. Remember that? I believe he was in a hotel room or something like that. Talking to the feds. But he's also had moments where he has went after police officers and those who have violated members of the black community. Now, how I feel about Al is, you know, I think overall, I have a positive view of him, and here's why. Because Overall, mainstream America hates its guts. I like that. See, when mainstream America hates you, usually you're doing something if you're black. That means you're doing something to help your people. You're standing out. Now, you're standing up. Now, that's what Al does. He does speak out a lot. He does stand up a lot. Some people claim that he's compromised now. But he's, if he is, he's still not compromised to the degree of being liked by the extremists that are out there. Those white supremacists and neo-Nazis and shit, they hate Al Sharpton's guts. I mean, they hate him. Usually, Whatever they hate, I love. Whatever they love, I hate. So, eh. Now, Al also mentioned something about the pastors, the pastor's role in justice, in pursuing justice. He said that there are too many punks in the pulpit. He said that pretty much in his first few sentences. I was sitting right behind a group of about maybe 20 pastors. And when he said that, they started sitting up right, you know, and they're looking around and they started whispering and he struck a nerve. I was surprised he said that. Now, was he talking about punks like 
calling them homosexuals or was he talking about them being cowards, afraid to stand up for the people? I think the latter. But the fact that he said it, you know other people were thinking the former. You know? You had to think about it. But anyway, check it out. If y'all hadn't checked out, checked it out, you know, check out the eulogy. Uh, the, the funeral itself, I thought was pretty good. There was a young lady who gave, well, the women was like, like killing it on the singing part. And one chick was like getting down so hard. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember their names, but there was one chick who was like very, very dynamic. She was kind of like, uh, I think she had a black, well, everybody had on black. Oh, uh, damn, how can I describe her? I just know she was real animated when she was singing. She was uh, really theatrical, you know? She had it going like that. And then there was another chick that was more heavy set, killing it. And then there was an older lady that killed it too. She seemed like she had some type of training in opera or something. Like, uh, like she was just whoa, and changing up pitches on her voice and stuff. I was like, damn, the women were killing it. So overall, I thought the, the, the memorial was pretty good. You always have situations where you know, you go a little bit over and of course they, you know, you had people that was going over, you know, and of course the pastor stood up, well not the pastor, but the, whoever the, the guy was that was uh, kind of uh, emceeing, he had to remind people, don't go over because, you know, we, we, we got to get to the burial, got to get to the burial site soon. I don't know how much of that that they showed on television, but I know to be there and see the family, uh, you have to get a bird's eye view of the family and, you know, their expressions to see other family members who have lost their sons, their daughters to police violence. You know, Trayvon Martin's mother was there. Michael Brown's dad was there. Eric Gardner's sisters, Eric Gard Gardner's sister, uh, Ahmaud Arbery had family there. Botham John had family there. So many, man. The service was somber yet powerful and beautiful to see so many people who had experienced similar tragedies to come all the way to Houston to support George Floyd's family in their time of need. To see all those people leaning on each other, it was beautiful, man, it was beautiful. Something that made me proud was when I was in the funeral procession and we're going down the street and we're like driving for miles and the streets aligned with people saluting, putting a fist up, waving, chanting George Floyd's name. It was beautiful, man. It's a beautiful moment. R.I.P. George Floyd. No more talk. What the ladies talking about? Yeah.